In this video, we're going to be doing the RGH 3.0 on my Xbox 360 Slim. And it's got the Trinity board in it because I specifically wanted that board when I went out and bought it. We're going to be using a Raspberry Pi Pico to read the NAND and obviously flash it. So without further delay, let's dive in. Now it's been some time since I've modded an Xbox and I've never modded a 360 Slim. So massive thank you to the Modsmith. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel in the description below, but he helped me along the way. And if I had any questions, he was on hand to help me out. So let's quickly go over what you're going to need to do this. Of course, you're going to need an Xbox 360. Mine has the Trinity board. So if you're actually going to go out and buy one specifically to do that, then it's best to do your research and get a Trinity board. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi Pico or similar device to read and write the NAND. The reason why I went for the Pico is they're really cheap and you can flash it with Pico Flasher. Again, I'll put links in the description. So there's everything there that you're going to need. And then you'll need some wire. Obviously, you'll need solder and flux, solder and iron, etc. And the only other thing you're going to need, which actually is the only thing that stays in the Xbox, because the Pico Flasher actually comes out when we're finished. The only things that get added are just some wires and then a 3K resistor. You need different resistors for different Xboxes. So make sure you have a look in the description below for the link to the main Pico Flasher website where it will go over every different model and what you need to actually do it. Software wise, all you're gonna really need is a Windows PC and a USB cable to go to the Pico Flasher and then a program called JRunner with extras. Again, I'll put all the links in the description below. So you've got everything you need. Right now we've got all of that out of the way. The next thing we need to do is take the Xbox apart. Disassembling the Xbox 360 Slim. So at the bottom, take the first panel off, take the hard drive out, take the second panel off, and then take the main section off itself. Now this is done on both sides. You might need to use a screwdriver and then something to get in to pull the clips out. It was a right pain in the ass. It took me a lot longer than you see here, but we're just trying to quickly go through this. So there's some clips at the back, a security sticker. And then of course, we've got clips on the other side where the power connector is. I do recommend watching a full teardown video. This is just quickly going through the steps. Now the faceplate can just be pulled up and that should actually come clear, but be careful. There is a cable connecting it to the main unit itself. So you're going to have to disconnect that. Don't yank on it because if you break it and it's easy to break, you're going to have to get a new cable. Then we're going to take the Wi-Fi module off. It's only got one screw. And then we've got the main unit at the front with the LEDs and power button, etc. There we go, we've got that off. And then it's a case of taking all those screws out. Now there's absolutely tons of them. All the silver ones, the black ones, and then of course there's four screws for the X clamp. Now once you've managed to get all the screws out, if you flip it over, you should be able to just lift the top off. Now this 360 I don't think's ever been opened, so it's really dirty inside. So take the DVD drive off, disconnect the two cables, take the shroud from the fan off, disconnect the hard drive SATA cable and the power cable. And then there's a screw on the front where you just have to unscrew that and then that whole assembly should come out. Underneath where the DVD drive sits, there's this little metal piece you need to take off. Then if you just grab the heat sink and fan, you should be able to take the whole board out. The next thing we need to do is take the heatsink and fan off in the X clamp. So there's two screws holding the fan in, take those out and then unplug the fan. If you then flip the board over, use a flat blade screwdriver to sort of prise that X clamp off. As you've seen, I only had to get two sides off and then it just came off. Turn it over, take the heatsink off and Ugh, look at that. 
and it's so dry as well. I'm surprised this Xbox wasn't overheating. So what I'm going to do off camera is give this board a real good clean with some isopropyl alcohol. Now it's time to solder the wires from the Pico flasher to the main board itself. Now in the description is going to be the guide with all the wiring diagrams etc. So we'll speed through this bit. So now the Pico flash is all connected. Plug the power cable in, but we're not going to turn the Xbox on. Then plug the USB cable into the Pico flasher and then into the PC. On the PC, open up JRunner with extras, then click read NAND. Now this will take a bit of time, but we're going to fast forward so it's not as long. So once it's actually read the NAND, what you want to do is click on RGH3 over on the right then create Zell. Once that's been created, you want to click Write Zell. Right, we're getting somewhere. It's actually flashing it now, and this will just take a couple of moments. Once that's completed, we go back to the Xbox. Now, I'm going to be using one of these quick solder boards, and in the description, there'll be a link to the Gerber files so you can get someone to print these yourself. I used PCBWay, which is a great segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. Now I'm sure you all know who PCBWay are. You design your own circuit boards, you send them the files, and they bring your ideas to life at really competitive prices. They don't only do circuit boards, they'll also 3D print your STL files. So let's take a look at it in action. As you know, I designed the Luxfox Pico case. So let's drag and drop that STL file across, and you can find this file on Thingiverse. Again, link in the description. We're going to set it to PLA and we want one and then of course you can change the colors if you so wish then all we need to do is submit the request and then hit agree and then what will happen is a member of the PCB way team will have a look at your STL file make sure there's no issues with it and once they've approved it you can then proceed to the checkout and order your print so I just want to thank PCB way for being today's sponsor now, one of the reasons I like to use a quick solder board is because you can put the resistor on it. So it's nice and easy to get it on there. This is a Trinity board. So of course it's a 3K resistor. You can use wires if you like. The quick solder board is not necessary. It just makes things a lot nicer and tidier. Now, one of the points you need to expose. Again, description, diagrams, you know the drill. Now, all I'm doing here is I'm using the end of a pair of tweezers to gently scrape away that solder mask. Once I've done that, a bit of flux and then some solder. I'm basically going to tin it up. The quick solder board, just put it up there and get it soldered in place. Now, this is what it should look like when you've got it all soldered in place. It looks very clean and tidy. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't quite get good enough footage of the post and PLL points but here's just a quick look, nice and easy. Now, once you've got that done, we're gonna start putting some of it back together. We're gonna put the heat sink and fan on because we need to do some testing and we need to turn the console on. And of course, we don't want it to overheat and explode. So that also means we're gonna have to put the X clamp back on. And then on the other side of the board, of course, we're gonna have to put the fan back on and get it all plugged in. Then, we're going to plug the HDMI in because we're going to turn the console on for the first time. So we're going to need that board on the front that has the power switch. And of course, we're going to plug the power in. Now, what we're not going to do is plug that Raspberry Pi Pico in. So after you turn the Xbox on, you're going to see Zell reloaded and it's going to go through its stuff, basically getting everything set up giving you information along the way. Now, what we're looking for is the CPU key. So let's fast forward till we get to that section. Now, as you can see, it's provided us with the CPU key and the DVD key. We won't need the DVD key, but we will need the CPU key. So make a note of it because we're going to be typing it in to JRunner to compile and then flash the firmware once and for all. So once you've made a note of the CPU key, you want to turn the Xbox off and you can just unplug the power cable to it. Plug the power cable back in, but don't turn the console on. Then the Pico flasher, connect the USB cable to that and then connect it to your PC. 
Now, as you can see, I've already started typing in the CPU key in the CPU key field, as you can see here on the screen. Now, make sure that you're doing it exactly. And of course, use capital letters. I think there's no lowercase, it's all capitals and numbers. Now, once you've finished putting in the full CPU key, you want to go to create X build. Now, this shouldn't take that long. And what it's going to do is going to create the build for you ready to write to the NAND. So next, we're going to write that to the NAND. Now, this will take some time, so I've just fast forwarded through the footage. But once this is done, we can then turn the Xbox on. So if you turn the Xbox on and you see the normal boot screen with the Xbox 360 logo, etc., and then it goes to the dashboard, basically everything's worked perfectly. Now, it might take a little bit longer to get to the dashboard, but that's because it's doing the reset glitch hack. So basically, if you've made it this far and you're on the dashboard, congratulations. You can now put the Xbox back together and then you can enjoy all the benefits of having an RGH 3.0 Xbox. So now we've tested it and it's all working. The next step is to remove the Raspberry Pi Pico stroke Pico flasher because as we said previously in the video, it doesn't actually stay in the console, which is fantastic because you can use it to do lots of consoles. Now, of course, once we've disconnected this, we can clean up the flux on that point that we were connected to. As you can see, there's some flux on there still. So get all that cleaned up and then put the Xbox back together. Basically, the reverse of taking it apart. It's not that difficult. Just make sure you don't miss any screws out and you put them in the right places. Now, this video is long enough as it is. But if you want to know what to do next, once you've got your Xbox RGH, leave a comment below. Maybe I'll do some tutorials on installing Aurora dashboard, etc. And of course, how to install games. Now, it did take me a couple of hours to get this done for a few reasons. I'd never taken a 360 Slim apart before. I've never RGH'd a 360 Slim. The only consoles I've ever done is the old fat ones. So there was a lot sort of back and forth between me and the Modsmith. And of course I was filming everything at the same time. Now, after I completed my RGH on my 360, the Modsmith did one of his own and it only took him 45 minutes to get it done. So when you're not filming and when you're not messing about, and obviously still learning and having him helping me through Discord, you can do them a lot quicker. But for me, it, it took about two hours from start to finish to actually getting it all done. So in summary, this mod was really fun and it was actually quite easy. The soldering is not that difficult. I know we did use a microscope, but to be honest, you can do it without. It's not the hardest solder job to do. Now that point that we had to expose and then solder to, that's probably the most difficult part of this installation. So I think I'm gonna end the video here, but if you have any questions or clarification on any of the subjects in this video or any other video, use the comments below then i myself will have a look and if i need to get assistance from the modsmith then i'm sure he wouldn't mind dropping a comment or two as well so i just want to thank you for all your support watching my videos and you know what to do like comment subscribe all that sort of stuff so i'm jp you've been watching alien gaming and as always i'll catch you in the next one hi youtube viewers if you enjoy JP's content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and give that bell a little tickle, t tickle, tickle, so you don't miss any future uploads. Thank you. Thank you. Tickle. Thank you. Hi YouTube viewers. Hi YouTube viewers. Tickle. Subscribe. Content. If you enjoy the piece content, tickle, subscribe, so you don't miss any future uploads. Tickle, tickle, content. Hi YouTube viewers, don't forget to tickle, like, subscribe. Thank you, thank you, tickle.
so you don't miss any future uploads. Thank you.